Hello and welcome to Decoding the Gurus with the psychologist Matthew Brown and the cognitive anthropologist Christopher Kavanagh. We're here for a special episode, Matt. A little bit of a, you know, relaxed, vibe-based assessment rather than our usual scientific dissection. You know, we have the grammar. It is a precise tool where we feed in the various candidate gurus and, you know, quantify them on 11 now factors. It's went up by uh, a factor of... uh, 10%. 10%. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's a, well, whatever, any case. There's also this, just this general thing, Matt, that, you know, although the, you know, statistics are all very well and good, quantification, yes, science, yes, we are pro-empiricism, but sometimes you just got to go by a vibe you know we've we've discourse served we know what it's like (laughs) so what i thought we could do today is go back in time from the beginning of this podcast cast our minds back to the gurus that we've covered and see how they fare on a tier list from Mm. s to d with one that is a, a rank that is actually good or not a guru, like doesn't doesn't even register. I, I hope Chris, we don't, we'll need that. Yeah. Excuse me, Associate Professor Kavanagh. I've got um, mm-hmm. a, a question and also something that's more of a comment than a question. Yeah. Who invented these tears? When did tears become a thing? Like I became aware of them at some point, but I, I think they were around a long time before then. I associate them with computer games or something. And for me, when I was a kid, we had, didn't have tears. There was no, like S, what does S stand for? I don't know what Super any of this means. special, special. It's like the special? best tier. Actually, in my university, you can also greet a student an S now above an A. A special. So, mm. Yeah. If you call someone a like, special in Australia, it's not a good thing. <laughs> my, my brother well, teaches special students. Look, the colors are there to help you, Matt. That's there to help you, right? But now, something for people to remember is that in our rubric, Being a very good modern guru or secular guru in the way that we describe it is not a good thing, right? Because the characteristics and the grammar are not positive. So actually, you would prefer to be lower on a scale, right? Lower is good. This is something to keep in mind, right? So, you know, whoever your favorite figures are, you probably would root for them to be lower. Or in this little category I've added, which is actually good or could be called non-guru. Like they're so low. They don't register, right? I've spent more time than I care to think hunting out square (laughs) images of the (laughs) gurus that we've covered. So if anybody is curious about, you know, these people, you can find the previous podcast episode on any good podcast player and you'll hear more details. But some of them we've covered multiple times. Um, But... Let's get started. We've got a lot of them. And we have to agree, Matt. We have to come to compromises here because there's only one tier list available. The technology right. doesn't exist for us to do independent so, tier So lists. there'll be some negotiations, some back and forth. There um, will. Or we'll see. In, We're very simpatical, I, more than you Until imagine. I eventually agree with you. I don't know how <laughs> negotiation works with you, Chris. Um, okay. Look, mainly this is going to be an exercise in you jogging my memory and reminding me of the bad shit these people have done. You've got visual cues. You've got visual cues. And Mm. the first one, this is kind of, you know, one of these you in, Matt. Carl Sagan. We did a series on, like, historical gurus or or also personal gurus of ours. And Mm. Carl Sagan was there. So where would you put him? Despite any quibbles one might have with Carl Sagan, maybe shady personal life, I don't know. Who can say? I think we'd have to put him in the actually good category, wouldn't we? He's an actually good science popularizer. Yeah, and also there he crucially constantly acknowledged his limitations and, you know, when he was speaking about topics outside of his particular area of expertise and this kind of thing. So I don't think he would... Maybe if he was alive now, he could be a better guru. Uh, you know, doing the rumble tumble of the guru sphere. But in his time, he basically doesn't compare it to the modern gurus that we look at. No, God sad, Matt. God sad. God sad. Well, I wouldn't put him as an S. He's not an S anything. No, he's not an S. <laughs> On the other hand, uh, he's, uh, he tries very hard to be He one. does try. Mm. He probably gets an A for effort, but... Even with that, I don't think... (laughs) Yeah, in terms of his concrete guru accomplishments and his skill at 
doing it, um, he's not fooling anyone. So I think I'd I think I'd rate him a B. Yeah, B or C. I'm, I'm even a C, B as low as or C. C. Yeah, because he he's was, not. He hides under a desk, Chris. He's hiding from the. I know that's all he does. Desk. So hi everybody. It's been a while since I've last headed under the desk. Like, is he B tier? He, he he would like to be S tier. Like in his mind, he's an S tier thing. But like, who's who's even feuding with Godzad? As far as I know, no one's paying attention. <laughs> okay, well, um, I'll be your C. See, we can always right. move him. Why don't we put him in C, and All then right. we'll see if he, All right. he we, somehow if, weasels. If we his way see up. some categories get too full, we might yeah. shift people around, spread them out a bit. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand, I, I think he has got to be... I want to put him as S. My heart says I S. I put him S tier. I'm absolutely S tier. Like, no, modern 2024 Russell Brand, he does everything. He's basically Alex Jones level conspiracy first with the whole Christian turn and that kind of thing. So, And he's pseudo-profound, he's profiteering, he's conspiratorial. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. S tier, yeah. Russell congratulations well done russell you're the first one you've broken the ice well there's a set of neurological and synaptic patterns that have aggregated to form consciousness and within it a set of ethics and moralities that are universal and ubiquitous and seem to reward what you would consider to be good and ethical moral behavior and that of course would be because of evolutionary biology and reciprocal altruism and the kind of new atheist arguments not exactly this is robin d'angelo matt next um of oh, okay now this was this was from a while back theme. this was from Years ago. It was, yeah. You're going to have to jog my memory here. You know, Matt, it's vibe-based. We don't need to think about our 11 factors and how she scores, but she would certainly <laughs> okay. score high on, like, moral posturing and outrage. Moral grandstanding. That kind Big of stuff. on the moral yeah. grandstanding. We definitely had a few bones to pick with. Not so high conspiracy theorizing or that anti-establishment kind of... Mm rhetoric mm. well but but still she is you know kind of positing that the fundamental reality underpinning all existence is like her yeah and still she's she's, she's more an annoying academic than anything else i'm gonna put her as a d that's what no. i would vote for now no, you're vetoing think, you're vetoing my d well okay. i i i would put her like she's kind of the inverse gas <laughs> <laughs> in a way like is it she you remember the level of rhetorical tool being applied was yeah. very high remember, I remember the, the stories actually, I'm, be, I'm beginning to remember the the, the self-aggrandizing stories in everyone's yeah. set up and clap type thing and also the the slippery logic where unless you basically agreed with her yeah and black went and white to her sessions, right? you you were one of the baddies women of color you want to be the one that goes in there and helps those white women see their racism does that sound good all by yourself. They need some diversity. So my point is, I can be in this room experiencing sexism and patriarchy, and I can be in this room perpetrating racism. Okay, I'll, 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 I'd, I'd be bumper up to see. Yeah. Uh, I'll put it there. They look like they're looking at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Scott Adams. Scott, Scott Adams. Adams. Scott Adams. I'm worried we're the not going to get The simultaneous sip. <laughs> so yeah. this think. is this is Dilbert creator but more recently Mastaka. unhinged conspiratorial <laughs> is a uh, yeah, right wing polemicist <laughs> master hypnotist think Dilbert but just just so much darker than that yeah I feel like he's an S as well he's S tier he is S tier yeah, yeah there's not really anything to be he's a terrible terrible person as well mm, amazing I don't have any fucking science I got people telling me their opinions about science. I don't trust people. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't trust people at all. Constantine Kissin. I I feel like God said he would love to be S tier. You know, he's doing those YouTube shorts with the kind of impassioned rhetoric filled speeches and all that kind of stuff. But essentially is an earlier career Dave Rubin. He is. He is. Faux centrism. It's hot right now. It's <laughs> very hot right now. I feel like he's a more effective guard, Sad. Yeah. 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 Which which inclines I know where me you're to going. put him at a B. B. Yeah, I I I go there too. Like I would have had him down D or C, but he's managed to 
kind of effectively crawl his way <laughs> up uh, the the totem pole. So yeah, he's yeah, grinding hard. He, he's grinding hard, and it's paying off. So you know, hats he off. He deserves to him. he deserves some credit for that. Next, we have Dasha from Red Scare. Okay, this is well, Dasha. Not going to put her in actually good. No, no, I will not. No, no, no. On the other hand, she was simply annoying and not really guru esque. I think. Yeah, so she's I just would put a, her just, just a partisan. Just, she is who she is. Uh, so D, I would say. Yep, yep, yeah. That's where I think she goes. She doesn't really have like any deep philosophy. Just reactionary conservatism dressed up as ironic hipster ruling eye. Ism. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a philosophy, Pat. It's a philosophy. So, there you go. And uh, you're D. We don't like you, but you're not up at, you're not very good modern guru, I'm afraid. You guys are racist or something? What's going on there? Uh, yeah, we're uh, right wing now. Right wing. First, yeah. we were in socialists, and now we're. Uh, uh, that's cool. On the other hand, Yuval Noah Harari, the author of Sapiens, the person that caused philosophers to, to, to be have upset as well as fundamentalist Christians. They both got some connection. Is not the word to have a connection yeah. when they, he was yeah, talking right. about we ideas. Thought was basi- we thought he was basically a Ted talk type guy, you know, he is a Ted talk guy. type guru, and- but, but he's pro UN and he's pro internationalism. And this is a, a kind of rare fish in that regard. Cause he's a, like a neoliberal popular kind of figure right like a, an actual moderate type person so he's kind of like destiny but not uh, obscene edgy he's, he's not, edgy. <laughs> he's not edgy. <laughs> yeah he's also written children's books and stuff like you know uh, promoting his point of view and stuff is he a net force for good or bad in the world do you think i think he's relatively harmless and he's kind of you know just a big ted talk ted talk big he's a villain in Alex Jones' pantheon, like because he's mm. kind of pro internationalism, right? Like, so he's he's essentially mm. Soros's handmaiden in their pantheon, and he does have a lot of big ideas. He does have a tendency to present like ideas which are not that mind blowing as imagine that <laughs> or everything is a fiction, right? Or you know, <laughs> That's like right. That's mm. right. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't do the in group, out group, cultish stuff and like all of that. So yeah, he's on the I spectrum. Mean, you he's on the spectrum. He's on the spectrum. So you're not going to put him as actually good because th- these are people that are because you know Noah Noah Haro is fine. You know he's all right. Is is he's not a big problem. So he's not bad. So I feel bad putting him next to Gad Sad or something like that. Remember, Matt, it's vibe based. So the thing is, like, I think he has scores a bit higher in some of the. Areas, right? But he's he's definitely got much more depth to him than somebody like Dasha, <laughs> right? Like he actually has ideas and stuff like that. But this tier list is just the guru spectrum, so we have to. It's yeah, not yeah. about qual. It's not about quality. It's not about anything else. Yeah. Not about whether we like. Gurus or not. need big ideas, and they need you know revolutionary theories, and he kind of has those. So okay, well, like case I, he does go, C-tier. maybe maybe C tier. Yeah. Yeah, I'd put him there. After you die, you'll go to chimpanzee heaven. And there you'll receive lots and lots of bananas. Brené Brown, self-help. You may Mm. not remember that well. A a bit Oprah-ish, but also talking about being brave enough to admit having trauma and that kind of thing. Ted Talkie. Yeah, like somebody was telling me recently that she's, uh, you know, still uh, incredibly popular and academic circles really yeah like okay. like education department stuff like that like not not the mm. top tier of education of academia <laughs> anyway. i feel like she must lose points because she's not really active in any of the you know like you're not gonna see her weigh in on the politics of the R or like get in the uh, shouting match with jordan peterson or something like mm. that right and mm. she's yeah. she's got the self-help niche but not yeah. really the I might put modern her on, yeah i might put her on d or c even d yeah i feel you know i'm having the same problem you have of putting her beside dash <laughs> so, but uh <laughs> but you we're not we're not commenting on their substance or just you know yeah she's just, not a very modern guru type but but she is like a self-help guru just not our definition of like secular modern guru now yeah uh, old 
Douglas Murray. Mm. Mm. I, I I feel like he belongs naturally next to Constantine. Yeah, the thing is, he's he's essentially like a polemical, right leaning mm-hmm. pundit, right? Yeah, but so he is, so is Constantine. So is Constantine, and I probably I think when we covered him, we were saying, well, he's not going to really score that highly because he's he's more just doing open polemical punditry. Right, like he's he, if you put him into category, you would more put him into polemical oh. journalist than Jordan Peterson style guru, right? But yeah, he does opinionate on a lot of stuff, and he is the mm. figure that Eric Weinstein presented as the yeah. archetype for the intellectual dark web. So yeah, and and like Constantine, he does he does present his punditry in. Pretty broad grandiose. sweeping terms, grandiose terms, and I think that's the kind of thing that elevates him on our on our barometer. So, um, yeah, I think everything you, you want to put him B makes me makes me want to put him on B. I kind of want to, yeah. I feel like he might be C, but um, I know, I know, he could be, he could be. Oh, well, too many okay. people in we'll, C, we'll go with you for now. We can he, we can shift them around there. later. We can shift them around later. Yeah, yeah, later. that's right. So, dear Ruben, now. Mm. I think he's straight in as D because like he he is just a pundit and mm. you know he wants to have high level ideas and all that but he's he's just a right wing yeah. polemicist that's mm. all he all he can do really yeah no no I think so yeah I'll put him at D oh no this one's good see no this is a this is a dark horse Matt that people don't know this is Michael O'Fallon of Sovereign Nations oh, Michael. fame Yes. They tried yeah. to we tried to warn people about what was what coming. Was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how it was happening. We tried to warn people at that time. Yeah. Like what was coming, how it was going to come in, the fact that it was everywhere and in everything. Right. But I still don't believe that they were ready for it. He's not very well known. Not very well known. No. But he he has pretensions to be a top tier guru. And he's got all of the spiel down, right? He he has the in grip, out grip thing. He's got the philosophical claims, revolutionary theories, yeah. conspiracy mongering. Cassandra not- complex. Don't forget Cassandra Complex. Popular. <laughs> That's right. Hasn't really found his niche yet. But yeah, I do love the weighty tones uh, in mm. which he evokes these things. So well, but is he A tier? Is he A tier? I think he's A tier in yeah. terms of like, he's not S tier because he's not actually particularly good at it. But mm. in almost all of the features, he yeah he dings up the grometer. He does. Yep. I'm happy with that. Throw him in A. Boom. Okay. A is populated. Uh, Got someone in A. It's yeah. good. Peter Adia, the longevity health man, Huberman. Yeah. Friend, no, no, he's not very guru esque, is he? I mean, he's a health guru, he's a health guru, but he lacks the broad scope required of our top tier gurus. Yeah, he's an optimizer, health type person. Yeah, but for our purposes, D. yeah, D, yeah, Oprah. Ooh, that's a tricky one. I feel that Oprah is an obvious guru candidate in like so many ways, right? Like, but. She doesn't fit into the modern guru template particularly well, but she's still like she's still on the scoreboard. If you remember when we covered her, she had these stories about, you know, being a gifted child and all that kind of thing. So I I would put a B or C tier. Like in terms of success, she's S tier. But in in yeah. terms of modern guru qualities, B or C. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I might go for C. I'll vote for C. All right. All right, there she is. Peter McCulloch, one of okay. the COVID conspiracists that we covered when he appeared on Joe Rogan. Shameless kind of. anti-vax grifter. Correct. Yes, has his own podcast and has continued down that path. And it's been, probably been a while, but if people go back and listen to those episodes, it's not just that they're anti-vax contrarians. It's that they have all these litany of stories where they are at the center of tons of discoveries and important yep. things like they are and, and the conspiracy uh, theories yeah it's all wrapped up together so yeah well i'd put him at a or b Wait, what would you yeah i for? think i think a as well some of the details have escaped me but my vibe based assessment is he was very <laughs> high for good reasons mm. now this one 
<laughs> what 70 power dives, right? 70, 70 power dives spinning what? all at once. This is Jordan Hall of sense making fame. Not so super popular in terms of amount of followers, but no. I feel a kind of guru's guru. Like, you know, yeah. he's yeah. in yeah. that tier. Yeah, like he's a little bit different. The sense makers are a little bit different from, you know, the conspiracy theorists and the anti-vaxxers and so on. But with him, like he falls into the category of I'm not even mad, I'm just impressed. Type. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and for that reason alone, my heart wants to put him at S tier because, man, that man can bullshit I amazingly know. well. Amazing. His well. metaphors are incredible. Like <laughs> in terms of success, he's not S tier in terms of, you know, like the the level of fame and influence he has but he is pretty good while we're at it i'm usually running i don't know 70 or 90 distinct paradigms simultaneously all the time and there's many and i mean and the idea is not to try to collapse them down to a single master paradigm but actually to allow each one of them to have the particular piece that they're holding just like eyes and ears Say, okay, cool, this paradigm is able to grasp things in a certain way, this one doesn't, that's neat. Recognizing always that you're never going to be able to perceive reality, but that by virtue of getting more and more dimensions of parallax, you can actually have more possibility of having some insight. He doesn't upset me like some of the other ones do. Like I, I just despise Russell Brand at the moment for various yeah. reasons. But he's just amazing. Like he's just amazing. So it's not that I dislike him a lot. It's just that I just, I'm in awe at his metaphorical I think uh, words you probably spinning. haven't seen that many of his takes might help. <laughs> but, so if I saw but, more uh, of them, I'd probably like, dislike him more. ARS, so Chris, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you decide on which bin. There. I think we've got to reserve the S tier for the absolutes. And like Jordan Hall, yeah. he's really good, but he's yeah. he's not up the, the top tier level. So yeah, no, you, you, you're goes. right. You're right. Michaela Peterson? I'm putting Michaela at D. I say D. D, yeah, she's got the meat thing. She's got the conspiracies. She's got... Like, like she covers all... all the same ground as, say, her father. But, you know, she's pretty basic the way she approaches it all. There's not, there's not many guru-esque qualities there. Yeah, that's true. Jonathan Haidt. Now, you might be tempted to put him in the actually good category because mm -hmm. I, I would I like you know some of his work on moral foundations theory and social intuitionist model mm -hmm. as well or whatever the case like and in terms of his academic work I find him interesting yeah but in terms of his public output the strength to which he advances the kind of anti-social media stuff and i feel that's a bit alarmist but does that is that just skewing my opinion because i think like he's a you know a bit alarmist and doesn't really like kind of misrepresents criticism and stuff like mm. Mm. yeah i mean if he's a bit annoying he's online, really... then he's, he's not the only one right i mean most of us are <laughs> when we're on the yeah internet. yeah you're right he's not like when i think in terms of secular guru stuff he isn't the problem is putting him in the actually good <laughs> <laughs> we like him a door seat his views, but I, I think that's that is where he belongs. Yeah. Let's so, let's define yeah. our actually good category as just like if on the net. It's not that we think they're wonderful. It's just like if if there's a net kind of badness, goodness thing, they fall just on the well, plus zero side rather yeah, than it's my fault column. for the labeling here. It should probably say, oh, whoa, whoa. it should probably say, yeah, I'll just do it not okay. not a modern guru. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> Great. Right. Now, now we don't have to hear about people on Reddit saying that we endorse such and such. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> JP Sears. Oh, God, JP Sears. What a blast from the past. What's he doing now? Is he still poodling about? Yeah, seen him. He, he's continuing on mm. as terrible as he always is. He's deep in, you know, Trump world and all that crap. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but right. Just, I've seen him. Yeah, do the really crazy mega stuff. I'm here at the southern border in Texas, helping the Biden administration secure the border by opening the border. I don't know why more Texans aren't on board with this. That's sharp. All right, come on through, guys. It's secure now. Yeah, he falls into that category. Like, he's like, who's that guy up there in S? What's his name again? Russell Brand. Russell Brand. I mean, I think it's one of the characteristics of 
the gurus, even though it's probably not an algorithm, is that they're so malleable. They're so mercurial. They'll drift and switch from thing to thing as opportunities arise. And I think it really reflects the sort of grifting, attention-seeking nature of it, which is they'll, they'll change their tune. They'll turn on a dime when they see opportunities. And that's kind of how they'd be successful. And he's a good example of that. You can just see him following, following the money around, you know? Um, yeah. But anyway, he's, he's also he is a conspiracy child of the highest order. Like I, yes. I feel he's he's fairly limited in his own capacities to develop, yes. you know, like theories or whatever. And he's bad at being a philosophical guru type. But he's no, he, he's yeah, yeah, he's like a bottom feeder. He can he can do the sort of mega. Look. Yeah, he's very similar to Gad Sad, but he's aggressively grifting. I, I kind of want to put him at B. That's what, my, that's what my heart's telling me. My heart's saying C, but because of his limitations. <laughs> he goes hard, but anyway. All right, we'll let you have him. We'll put him let up there. B. Hassan. 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 Mm. Um, mm. He doesn't really... Well, no, that's not true. I was going to say he doesn't like promote the philosophy and, you know, all that. But he kind of does in terms of... It's just a very politically villainous one. Like, and there is the personality cult and there is the, you know, conspiracy mongering and all that kind of stuff. But he, again, falls more into the polemical political commentary space as opposed to the modern guru. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, my gut doesn't want to put him high. See? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think C. Yeah. C feels right. I think he's saying no. See, no, look, this should highlight to you. It's not about politics. Like... <laughs> Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman. He is he is really something. I do not like that guy. Not that that's going to affect my judgment. Yeah. You know, like the thing is, he's a full centrist tech utopian. Elon Platitude, Musk stan. saccharin. Yeah. He has the depth of a puddle. That's right. He's got the emotional complexity of a 13-year-old boy. And he would like to. He has pretensions of grandeur. You know, like he... Mm. He often, and he is doing all the things about weaponizing his audience. He controls his Reddit and his <laughs> uh, social media presence with an iron fist, uh, with a team of moderators <laughs> that are very lexiate, shall we say. But in other ways, not not that good. He's more of a facilitator than he is a, uh, I, I, like... I think you've got to award more marks for effort. Like, he's someone who's trying really, really hard to be the thing it's not convincing to you or me but a lot of people think he's one of the smartest people oh, they do think in he's... the world right so i vote for b i vote for b i'll, I'll go for I'll, b i'll put him there with constantine kiss and those two belong together yeah agreed they're there <laughs> now we've got anthony DeMello, an odd figure here because <laughs> he's nobody a... has heard of including <laughs> me <Nobody's heard> of. <laughs> but when we covered him back there he is there he is he's a jesuit um that was like kind of promoting <laughs> a type of uh like christian mysticism that was close to buddhist spirituality popular in the 80s and 90s, I think. The sheer fact that we've covered him is just proof that we're not trying that hard to be successful because if we were, we'd never cover people like that, Chris. This is I, purely to make of... Chris happy to cover this guy. No, no. We covered him because we were saying people that might fit our gurus, like gurus in our past, people that we found attractive when we were younger, their philosophy or whatever. And yeah, I don't think he's a modern guru though he's like he's more self-help spiritual mm. motivational speaker guy from the 90s so he if you want to see some of the bad things he did go and listen to the episode but he's he wouldn't really no, fit no he's into fine the no no category. no he's totally he's totally fine i i look i i'm impartial I have no feelings about the man one way or another you don't I even know to, him <laughs> i don't even know him don't care about him he's dead isn't he so um he doesn't mind yes. one way or the other i listened to his content i thought he was fine even though he, he He's into that spiritual stuff, which I am not. Anyway. You're okay. And I'm okay, you're okay. We're all okay. We're great. Bill Maher. Well, apart from being an anti-vaxxer, what's wrong with him, Chris? Oh, he's just a smug, like, <laughs> oh, dickhead. <laughs> that's, the, that's his problem. He is someone that likes to think that he's got it all worked out and he's the only yeah. rational person looking yeah. at things. He's commenting yeah. on both but sides. But that's just because he's genuinely deluded, I think, rather than attempting to be run a game on people. I, I think yeah, I'd actually he, put him... I'd, I'd put him in not a modern guru. Just don't think he is. Well, I mean, 
Yeah, oh, okay. I kind well, of see. Well, he's a, maybe a little bit, but I mean, no, just, it, like he, if they have Ruben and Constantine are on the spectrum, he's on the spectrum. He's not someone that qualifies his views, and he's given, he's promoted a whole bunch. I mean, he had Brett Weinstein and stuff on to talk about their alternative theories. Yeah. Okay. No, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. You remember him talking to Dawkins? Don't you remember that? Yeah, like, like the delivery is uh, very different, but he, he kind of does fulfill the same role as someone like Joe Rogan, right? In that he... he didn't yeah, he's even... a... I would say he's a classic, like... The reason I would put him here is because oh. he's a... Uh, if I was going to put him there, I'm going to move him. But it would be because <laughs> he's a... Uh, He's a celebrity pundit. Like, that's what he is. He's got a talk show and opinions, and he's an annoying mm. prick. But I, but I think his club random and his various anti-vax stuff yeah. puts him a little bit somewhere there. But no, he's not good. He's like D tier. Yeah, yeah. But what would you say to the argument that he's a bit like a Joe Rogan in that he's like a credulous conduit for a whole bunch of nonsense? Yeah, I'd, Joe Rogan I would score very high because Joe Rogan has all these conspiratorial tendencies which are yes. really like central. And it's not central. It's not central to Bill Maher. Maybe he should go higher. I think I think we've um, now switched positions. Now I'm thinking he needs to go a bit higher. Maybe C. Maybe C. C tier? Well, I also like that it's approaching there. a normal distribution. This is I know this that's what me. did it. He went from there to there, but all right, fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it can stay there. I'd put him D tier, but I'll accept that. He's over hard to classify. Right of respondent Jimmy Wheel, Jamie sense Wheel. maker. Seems like yeah. a pleasant guy. Seems like a pleasant guy. Aims to please. Aims to please. He was in that sense making cubed video which was amazing it brought in hours of enjoyment to, to thousands and is the third you know a working place the idea that there is between and among us but not specific to any of us an additional intelligence that can emerge and that is that that is that the differentiator between what you were describing as coherence and simply maybe collective intelligence or problem coordination. solving you know, or coordination yep that's okay. a very I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, and he, he's like kind of techno shaman, you know, territory in terms yeah. of like the general things he promotes. But I mean, I basically I'd... realized he's, he's basically a management consultant, but consulting to the kinds of Silicon Valley companies and stuff, which really go in for... Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey type guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a job. Like, it's a literal job description. That's how, that's how people... That's what people do for for a living. That's a sad comment on the society we live in, but yeah, no. Um, where to put him? Where to put him? See, I per se see to you. He, he he's big on the big ideas. He likes the big ideas. He is. <laughs> mm, he is. Yeah, I think I'm mm. I think I'm leaning towards B. B. Okay, there we go. Jimmy yeah. is up there. B tier. No, 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 no. Mister Huberman. Mr. Huberman. Mr. Huberman. Same lane, optimizer, self-help bro type. But I I think in some respects more effective at utilizing the cult of personality. Yeah, yeah. And actually a bit more leaning into pseudoscience, I think. If the more that you look at Huberman, the more you see him mm. taking yeah. various pseudoscience, pro-pseudoscience stances so like adi as far as i know during the pandemic was not promoting covid conspiracies now huberman wasn't dealer but for somebody communicating about public health and talking about evidence-based treatments essentially never recommended vaccines i wonder why yeah well i'd put him at b or c i think okay well i would put him at a because of the parasocial stuff which is a bit unfair so i'll put him at b okay compromise compromise ah christopher hitchens hitchens Chris yeah no, mm. so there's the possibility of him going here right because he isn't a modern guru in many ways again like a kind of pundit public intellectual but he look he he definitely i think straight into circular guru territory i mean remember being being somewhat of a secular guru doesn't mean you don't like them. I quite like um, Hitchens. I, he's a good writer. At the, at the same time, he is a master rhetorician and it is very slippery with his logic yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I remember. Very, he can be very convincing if you don't think about things too much. And he compels like a huge amount of um, 
like affection and loyalty even now yeah, years after he his does. death. So so he's a bit more than just like a pundit. Yeah. You know, he's he inspires he inspires people, you know, including me. Yeah, in a way like that... Stephen Pinker doesn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in a way that Stephen Pinker doesn't. There's no so, there's no Pinker slap, right? There's the head no. slap and uh, yeah. So I'm putting him on the spectrum, despite the fact that I don't mind him um on balance. Um C. C? Oh, I I would have linked D, because I feel like he sort of qualified positions but maybe not maybe i've just got like a you know rosy uh, yeah, no, image of yeah, that no maybe d no i actually i'm kind of i think c might be a bit harsh <laughs> is there beside dear ruben <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's, that's sorry, sorry, sorry mate. <laughs> yeah you're much you're much much smarter than dave ruben much much smarter oh this guy this guy matt yudkowski <laughs> yudkowski yudkowski <laughs> eliezer ai doomer Federer wearing <laughs> incredible yeah. analogy spewing yeah. individual. Do, do, yeah, do you remember the story of the uh, of the aliens Lex and the people in the, box. in the box and the time? <laughs> yeah. Suppose that some alien civilization with goals ultimately unsympathetic to ours, possibly not even conscious as we would see it, managed to capture the entire earth in a little jar connected to their version of the internet but earth is like running much faster than the aliens mm -hmm. so we get to think for 100 years for every one of their hours mm -hmm. but we're trapped in a little box and we're connected to their internet it's actually still not all that great an analogy because you know if you want to be smarter than you know it's not, something can be smarter than earth getting 100 years to think but nonetheless what a journey that was um, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, i think he's a tier really well because the whole cassandra complex yeah. and one thing we didn't touch on so much when we covered him he has also written uh harry potter <laughs> fan fiction <laughs> like detailed and i think it's like Harry Potter and the rationalist approach or something. And you remember Helen Lewis was reading some extracts mm. from his erotic fiction. He's a man of many talents, yeah. but I, the, I think. The thing about him that I kind of admire, that he's incredibly cringe, but he sort of absorbed it and made it part of his yeah. personality in a way that's almost endearing. But don't you remember, I think this is the, the thing that cinches it for him to be A tier, is do you mm. remember he said, in the space of learning about AI, I've essentially mastered like oh, 12 yeah. disciplines and oh, there yes. were yes. like, you know, computational yeah. neuroscience and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. Now, so again, with Yudkowsky, I don't think he's particularly pernicious. Um, oh, no, he's I, not I, a, I think he's, I think he's, he's quite just an benign. AI doomer. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but he does score highly on, on Agarometer. So, yeah, up he goes. God damn. James Lindsay. Uh, no, I, James Lindsay. James Lindsay. I think James Lindsay is scoring highly in all of the yeah. elements of yeah. the Garometer. All of them. I think so. He's a, he's a terrible, <laughs> he's a terrible, terrible person. <laughs> terrible yeah, person. And, but he's so, like... He wants to be so more significant than he is that I want to put him right. in a I'll, tier rather than S. I, I, I know. I was going to say that. I was going to say that. I was. I know the way you think, and I know that you'd be thinking he would like to be. He would like to be yeah. in this tier, and you're not going to want to put him there because that would, if somehow make him happy on some on some level. If you ever became aware of this, and you, that's why you don't want there? to. I I actually. Don't want to put him in the S tier on purely logical reasons, Chris. Because why? Because even though he does score highly across all of those things, he's not the alpha and the omega of it. He's quite clumsy and bullheaded the way he goes about it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's no. got monomania and like he's he does is stay in a kind of polemicist pundit lane like now. So yeah, yeah. Like in some ways, he's like that orange haired guy. He's he's quite simplistic. He, does, he like he doesn't yeah, really yeah. have much going on. Um, like like remember how he memor like he's memorized like half a dozen words from the critical. Oh, and uh, he gave off that theory, speech, yeah. and he just keeps keeps rattling them off again and again because he doesn't really doesn't really think that oh, much. So the, um, the goddamn uh, feminist glaciology paper. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's right. It's, it's, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> he's, a, he's like a little duckling that's imprinted on one research paper and then <laughs> yeah. follows it around forever. When I first read the Feminist Glacier paper myself, this paper about feminist glaciology, feminist glaciology, that's in the Feminist Glacier paper. Feminist glaciology. The case that actually motivated us was the Feminist Glacier study. I don't remember what it was titled. It was about feminist glaciology. It was about something like ice, gender, glaciers okay so okay a- okay we've, we've decided a tier does hit it across the okay board. daniel denner i think just yeah well, he's academic uh, with a public and I, profile and I like him for what it's worth yeah that's so no ibram x candy okay. no I, yeah ibram x candy that <laughs> this caused us never ending uh hassles initially because we essentially were saying we didn't agree with his like binary anti-racist or racist point of view or find him a particularly fascinating person. But like when we looked at his content, it was, you know, just fairly Mm. like bog standard, a particular academic perspective, right? And for that reason, he wasn't engaged in like most of the things that we see amongst the secular gurus. But people did point out at the time, if you look at his Twitter behavior and if you look at like the implosion of his center, there's a yes. lot of claims about him being unfairly persecuted. And yeah. so yeah. if you take his stuff in full context, he mm. probably would have scored higher than we gave him in that episode although he, he scored like middling you know mm. i i think so i think he's like c tier oh really c that high i thought you'd put him at as either d or not a guru no i i think he is up there when you take the like the social media stuff in the account properly i'm not saying he's he is doing all of the things but he's doing some of them quite a lot all right all right i haven't really paid attention so i'll, I'll let i'll let i you mean i haven't heard way. anything about him in recent times earlier, but that was just a lot. And when I saw those explanations about how any criticism of him was essentially a targeted campaign, I was like, ah, okay. Yeah, it just, it's like Robert D'Angelo, right? It's interesting kind of similar dynamics. And anyway, I like the way it makes the triangle, looks like a triangle. I'm, I'm liking the distribution. Yeah, but you see where I'm hovering? Oh, this guy. Francis <laughs> <laughs> Ross. This is Francis Ross. I could have put him I in the green. He's not. He's not on the spectrum. He's not cut out for this. He's not cut out for it. No. You know. Um, he's been he's been dragged along by Constantin, and it's to his credit that he is not the same kind of animal. I mean, I think he tries. I think he, he tries. T- he tries. Sometimes. But... <laughs> he's an anti woke comic, you know, full centrist person. But yeah, he's he's not a, nobody is uh, ascribing to Yeah. He's not Francis slippery enough. He's, he's not slippery enough. He's just too too straightforward, I'm afraid. Okay. Heller. Heather Haying. I my heart says S without thinking about it, without rationalizing it. Just just gut feeling. I think S. I think S as well. I think she's the dark horse. She is the dark horse because mm. people think she's not as bad as Brett. And maybe once upon a time she wasn't. But if you just In let her ways. go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's, she's something. Her and Brett are simpatico. They are 50 yep. 50 at the, the yep. Dark Horse podcast. Yeah. So I think more and more that they are actually like a, like a hive mind. Like they've spent too much time in that pine paneled room, <laughs> too much time in each other's company. And they're, uh, they're, they're like a, they're, they've basically done a mind meld. Okay. What about a counterpoint though, Matt? Like when you compare her level of self aggrandizement and like cultish dynamics, cultivation and stuff. Uh, She's not at the same tier as uh, Brett, is she? That's, that's that's kind of true, actually. Now I think about it, like in terms of the conspiratorial thinking, certainly the anti yeah, she's up there. Stuff. She's up there, hundred percent. And the dodgy, like logical, non secretaries, she's there. But yeah, we we'll, we'll, we won't talk about Brett now. We'll, we'll wait for mm. till, he, till he comes up. The ace of spades. So I moved her down to A. Is this yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. Yeah. I'd like to see her in A. Gwyneth, Gwyneth Paltrow. Paltrow. She, I mean, it's She's, such a shame, you know what I mean? Because I enjoyed watching her acting in movies. Acting, and, yeah. And listening to her opinions is just disappointing. Mm. I'm sorry. She's a foolish woman. But is she a guru? Mm. Uh, 
and agree. so she, I mean, she has a whole self help line and she's got a whole spiritual outlook and all that kind of thing. But I would say she's like much more in the realm of a marketing specialist yeah. with an interest in yeah. like pseudoscience and that kind of thing. So, but one counterpoint is you remember, Matt, we listened to your podcast. And she was like, she's kind of a conduit in a way Rogan is mm. for an absolute gallery of pseudoscientists and pseudo profound people. So I, I think she is on the spectrum of modern gurus, but she's not really in line with the mm. kind of gurosity that we are talking about. So I wouldn't say not a modern guru, but I would say D tier in terms of like ours, not in terms of success, but in, in terms of like fitting the template for yeah. what we are talking about. Yeah. If we were doing complementary and alternative medicine scoring, she'd blow the lid off, but we're not. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Secular guru D she is. Rutger Bregman. You remember the the man with that annoyed Tucker Carlson and that had various a Ted Talky guy. Oh, a Ted Talky he's, guy. He's he's that guy who's like the climate change skeptic. Oh, Bjorn Lomberg. Bjorn Lomberg. Yeah, he does look a bit like him. He does, he does look, look a bit yeah, like I thought, him. I thought that's who it was for a second. I was going to have a go, but um, no, I think I, I think I kind of liked him, didn't I? I can't remember. I liked him too, but I, I still think he's a little bit, you know, a big guy. It, like I feel like TED Talk people almost automatically are somewhere on the spectrum. I didn't find him objectionable, even when I don't like strongly endorse his point of view and stuff but like yeah but then again height is there so i guess he probably is not in the same way that height is not well unless you demand that it goes d tier uh no no i'm fine with that yeah leave him there destiny 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 he's a streamer i mean that's the thing he's like he in streamer he's s tier he's the you know mm. alpha and omega of the political streamer pundit class. One of the things that people argue about in terms of him being a guru is he has a huge devoted parasocial following, right? And he likes drama. He is the main character very often on social media, especially recently. He's definitely in the guru sphere in terms of he's bouncing about and, you know, interacting with people, maybe less now that he went on his post-assassination rants. So where to put him? Where to put him? It kind of feels like he's naturally should be here beside us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, that is that is where he naturally belongs. Like I, I think not that it matters. I think he's a lot smarter than Hassan, and I think he is correct about things more often than Hassan. But that's that's just my opinion. I think in terms of the yeah. guru, in terms of the guru features. Him and Hassan are, are brothers. Yeah, there's. I think there's different areas that they're kind of. Like I, I think that Hassan's approach to research is different than Destiny's, for yeah, example. Yeah. But, but that's a, but that's a separate uh, yeah. thing, right? But in terms of the kind of parasocial devotion and yeah. whatnot that is cultivated, it's it yeah. is similar. And they're not D, he's not D tier. So yeah, C. I'd say yeah. C. Jordan oh, Peterson, king. not a modern, the not king. a modern, not, not a modern just a very Jordan smart Peterson, academic. No, he's, he's he's fine. He's, so he, he's okay, a professor. So he, he's a psychologist. <laughs> yeah, he's next. <laughs> Yeah. No, he's S tier. The yeah. man the man is a marvel. He he broke the mold. He forged a path for most of these other people to follow along. You know, I take my cap off to him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. No, no, this is a little bit of a well, look, so Chomsky, I would put him if it was just down to his output, I think I would say not. A modern guru more like a political commentator and academic right mm -hmm. because that's what he is but in the same grounds that we just justified destiny being there i feel that he does attract a large motivated following and he has been someone you know that just has a, opinions across a broad sphere and stuff but in other ways he is you know very academic about it so yeah, like I, I think because of his role, he's somewhere on that spectrum. But I would be tempted to put him like not a modern guru, but yeah, hmm. like hmm. maybe Hitchens, right? He's essentially like a Hitchens yeah. character in yeah. a way. Yeah, yeah, at least a left wing Hitchens. No, no, he, I think he belongs there at, on D uh, at D with, with Hitchens. That makes sense. 
Sean Carroll. You know no. what? We could even organize them from left to right according to how much, you know, according to flavor or according to how much we <laughs> yeah, like them. The, <laughs> we'll yeah. despise them. Don't, don't add a complex to it, man. Don't add it. But we, can, we can always do this later. Okay. Uh, Sean Carroll, I executive Sean Carroll. decisioned him to not a, Like he, he issued far too many caveats. He no, was no, he's, uh, self-deprecating and whatnot. No. 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 no also no. Mick West. Mick West. I'm a... Yeah, afraid not. He, he's here because he was in an episode with Eric, but uh, he scored the lowest out of any one of them. Yeah. The no, no, I, such- I, I like that we have these characters, those two characters in particular on there, but we should get more, which is like, I like to show that the, you know, the null, <laughs> like it's very possible not yeah. to be a secular guru. Very possible. You, you can have a podcast, you can be a public opinion editor, you can create content, you could be even wanting to get income from YouTube or Patreon or Substack or whatever it is. And you don't, you don't have to do the things that most of them do. Anyway, let's go yeah. on. Robert Malone, STR, STR. I'm blowing the, yeah. the doors off it. Yeah. Like it, he's worse than McCulloch because he, he claimed more <laughs> like <laughs> conspiracies and being more central to completely yeah. unrelated things to COVID vaccines. And I mean, he also claims to be the inventor. I think the thing which struck me about him is that, do you remember in that initial interview he was on that discussion panel with brett in hindsight or retrospect he was so he was paying such attention to his presentation wasn't he like yeah like it it subsequently came to pass it became very clear just how extreme he was right and how yeah fallacious his claims about himself were but during that interview you could tell that he was playing a role yeah so he he's s tier up he goes anna from red scare i think just beside dasha right like they're simpatico and similar in all aspects so like i've heard her opinionating recently on the republican convention but she's essentially you know like a political commentator but about on the same point of the spectrum as anna in terms of like being secular it's mainly all our people that are kind of elevating her to that position. Mm-hmm. Sure. Contrapoints. Contra yeah, I remember points. we gave her a pretty Low. clean bill of health. I think part of the reason, though, is that, especially in the earlier episodes, we were a little bit more restrictive about this, but we only considered the material that we covered, and we covered a relatively uncontroversial thing she did about justice, because there was supposed to be a justice part two, which we thought would be the more controversial one, but she never released it, I think. So although she is in many respects a lot more restrained and a lot more focused on a specific topic, like, you know, philosophical takes around modern culture or just philosophical concepts or whatever, and with a leftist twang to it, she has the same Destiny Hassan thing about the level of parasocial attachment to yeah. her it does do the rhetorical thing a little bit like a hitchens in a way um, yeah and, and, and you may like it like just like i, I like we did and, and like don't mind hitchens but it is rhetoric right when when you're putting together this these making all these connections to sort of craft this great thesis so that everybody agrees um yeah interesting an interesting See? one I, uh, yeah, maybe i wouldn't say she's exactly the same like yeah i kind of think a little bit below Hassan and Destiny in that yeah. respect. I might, no, I think might so be too. just my thing, no, but yeah. I, no, I feel like she should be there with, with Hitchens and Chomsky. That makes sense. All right. Uh, Jerome Larnier. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put him next to the Nick B. I, guy. <laughs> next to yeah. Nick D. Yudkowsky, just, just because they, they just seem to belong together. Yeah. they. I, you know, the thing is that I feel like he isn't on that, level in some respect because he's a little bit more restrained but then whenever i think about the interviews of him like playing the flute and wandering around barefoot you know as he talks about the internet and or his alternative about how we should run currencies and Mm. all these kind of things like yeah yeah he is he is pretty <laughs> he is pretty guru-esque. I mean, like Yudkowsky, I sort of put him in the category of benign. Yeah. Benign. Yeah, he is. I mean, gurus. like he's not he's in no way is he like on Michael O'Fallon no. level, but I 
I kind of feel that's why I feel like I want these sorted. I want the I want the ones the pernicious ones on one side and the benign ones on the other side. Just um, live with the chaos, Matt. So where yeah. where uh, does he go? B, A or B? Uh, I kind of B. think B. I can't B, think B. Yeah, yeah, like he's not. B. I want to put him next to Gedkowski, oh. but it's can't really justify I like, it. I I like this picture. Of I, that's a good photo. Zizek. Yeah. Now <laughs> now now we like Zizek, right? For the record. Yeah, I, I like Zizek, or Zizek, sorry. Zizek. Uh, I enjoyed, even though it's not agreeing with him about a ton of stuff of his interpretations. But he, <laughs> not agreeing about the fun. shark. Not agreeing about the shark. He's just fun. That's right. Yeah. And he's, he's, a, he's, a force for, he's a force for good, I think. But he is a guru. He is, he a, is a guru. Modern he guru. is a guru. Yeah. yeah. He's a philosophy guru. Yeah. I think he's... Yeah, then I feel bad point. putting him beside this villain's role. No, you got to sort them, Chris. You got to put them, put no, them we'll, together. We, we can, no, that's a fake for another. <laughs> we'll do another, uh, another, another episode. We'll sort them. Yeah, yeah. but there he maybe, is. Maybe yeah. we'll do an update if you can save this tier ranking. We'll, we'll get a oh, few I more can gurus. See that. Yeah, we'll get a few actually, more gurus in the bag, and then we'll we'll sort it then. I'll mention now as well, Matt, that I made this template public, so like other people can go search for it and can uh, oh. like sort their own tier list after. So mm-hmm. Elon Musk is <clears throat> S tier, isn't he? He's S tier, I think. Yeah, mm. yeah, he is for so many reasons. So many but, reasons. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Nassim Taleb. Uh, he's, he's pretty guru-esque. And again, he's a, he's a substantial guy, I think. Yeah. He's a substantial a, a, a guy. So this is a heavy thinker, hitter. I think, yeah. yeah. So it's not really a negative comment on him, but man, like the cultish dynamics and the, the, just oh, the, the me, yeah. sweeping broad kind of, I'm smarter than everyone else. They, you know, the status oh, yeah, yeah, of anything, he is. you know, he's figured it all out. He's revolutionized so many, so many things. Yeah. I think even higher, like he's not. B? He's not a bad. He's not bad. It's, he's just very secular guru esque. So B. Yeah, I guess because uh, I was going to say, but he doesn't have the conspiratorial tendencies, and he doesn't have the. He's got other bits, other things in spades. Yeah, he does. Yeah, I think he's he's B. Even though, uh, like, if you look at our reading, he doesn't score particularly highly. I think that's all right. This is the vibes, right? We're not constrained by the restrictive. Shackles, That's right. Yeah, the garometer. straight jacket of the garometer. We get to go with our heart. We're, we're trying to four four figures, which I think are going to be interesting. Please, Eric. Eric is us. Up to the top. Up like, you go. Yeah. Up you go, Eric. If Douglas Murray is the archetype of the intellectual dark web, Eric Weinstein is the archetype of the modern secular guru. Mm-hmm. So yeah. he's yeah. in there with us. I would put him um, higher. Not. I would put him <laughs> higher than Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah, he is. And I, I think we can spoil just, we may as well since they're siblings. Like uh, yeah. Brett is is ass there as well, right? Like uh, yeah. Yeah. they're up there. Now we've got <laughs> Joe. Mm. I know you were hinting, Matt, that you want to put him a bit lower because of his like lack of depth and that he's mainly a conduit. But I also think his role as the great can of mm. podcasting and this conspiratorial tendencies. It's not just about vaccines. He's an anti-vaccine guy, but he's also mm. a conspiracy guy. He's also he's anti also... anti all the institutions. Yeah. Um, no, no, I don't want to put him low. I, I I didn't mean to imply that. Yeah, I'd put him A tier. I'd put him A tier. I can't put him. Yeah. S, I can't put him S tier because he doesn't no. have any of the pseudo intellectual pretensions. So I mean, he does. <laughs> he no, no, does no, not, not convincingly. I mean, not, not, not yeah. even to some. You know, he's. I mean, I know he thinks he's smarter than everyone. He's. You know, he could work it out. You know, but come on, he, he's not a pseudo intellectual. And last one, last. just a topical one. Doctor K. Doctor K. Doctor K. 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 Yeah. K. Now again, he's got his particularly in the self help optimizing your mental health, YouTube influencer kind of sphere. But as we saw, you know, big proponent of Ayurvedic medicine and a lot of... I know where I'm putting him. I've worked I've worked it out. Well, you tell me where you want to put him first. I'm, trust B. me, it's in my head. B. Yes, what I was going to say. B or C? B. 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 Okay. B. B. There we go. Yeah. yeah, he belongs there with Huberman. I'm quite happy with this. I think it's, me you too. know, this is an interesting little... Uh, presentation. Now, the thing is, the people listening, Matt, they can't see it, so they can't see this. This, but it will be somewhere. It <laughs> will be, be available. On the, <laughs> it'll be on where you call it the um, Twitter. 
go look on Twitter. We'll post it up there so you can see our mm. our tier list if you want no. to be reminded of where they are. And if you want to do it yourself, there'll be a little link with a podcast where yeah. you can do that. You can play at home. That's right. We can all decode. It, decoding's for everyone. The other thing I like about this, Chris, is that we've got all of those tiers pretty well populated. It's become more of a uniform distribution than the Gaussian. But this speaks to the dimensionality of the gyrometer. It speaks to the spectrum. And this is something we've emphasized right from the very beginning. It is not a blanket category. We're not putting people into gurus or not. We're saying there's a spectrum of gerosity. And uh, look, now we, we, we see it right here. Plain as day. That's it. Well, there we did it, Matt. We ranked them all. I'm happy with how that's ended up. And people can agree or disagree. The beauty of the internet is that you can go, you know, do these things for yourself. And it's it's just our opinion, man. Okay? That's all. And no, we're not calling for the people that are in S tier to be censored. We're not saying remove them from the internet. We're just saying if you're taking your life advice from them, you know... <laughs> God bless you. Good luck out there. Good luck. I hope yourself. you don't bump into too many used car salesmen in your time. But um, yeah, that's it. And and good job, Carl Say again. Um, and just to make one thing absolutely clear. So in the category that we made that was like not a modern guru, Francis Foster plus Carl Sagan. We're not saying we love them both equally or think they're a substantial. We're just saying they don't really fit onto the modern this is, secular this is not a ranking of how much we'd like or dislike people if people want we can we can make it different yeah we ranking, could make that just purely on how much we like them uh if anyone cares constantine would uh <laughs> would not fare well <laughs> you would not be in the middle of that distribution <laughs> but um all right so there we go there we go i'm gonna stop it here matt i'm gonna let people wish people goodbye there's a podcast go listen to it or you're listening to it now and congratulations and uh if not We'll be back soon enough with decoding, supplementary material, all the usual. This is just a bit of fun. Bye. Bye. How do you take over the world from inside the box? Like, for example, you're really bothered that humans go to war. You might want to uh, kill off anybody with violence in them. This, this, this is Lex in a box. We'll, we'll concern ourselves later with AI. Okay. You do not need to imagine yourself killing people if you can figure out how to not kill them.